All right. Well, one one more game I do want to get to here because we do have the Raiders, and uh, certainly uh, Adam has a, a very intimate knowledge of this team. Sunday Night Football, Steelers at the Raiders. We're sitting two and a half in favor of the Raiders. Oh, we have had a couple of threes pop up, actually, in favor of the Raiders in this one. 43 is the prevailing total here. Stephen, when we look, I mean... It, the Steelers offense looks like the absolute worst offense maybe in the league. And that, that includes all these other teams that we think are, are bad. Right. I mean, they had 200 yards total last week and 71 of them came on one busted like play to, to pick it. So like, it is, it's bad, bad for the Steelers. And I don't know if I necessarily want to back the Raiders, but I don't think I feel very comfortable backing the Steelers as crazy as that sounds. I mean, it is just, it is, it is atrocious what they are running out there on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. I, I've been hearing the Matt Canada um, frustration from Louisville, Kentucky from all the way out there in mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. It's been, you know, they're tired of this guy. Um, it seems like every time this game hits three though, the resistance is there and, and the Pittsburgh mm-hmm. buyers come in and gobble up those threes. There's a couple expensive ones left here as we record Friday. And I think uh, that's about the only thing I'd be interested in. Maybe a Pittsburgh teaser leg here. Cause I think this is just such a big step down in class from what the Steelers offense had to play the first two weeks against San Francisco and Cleveland. So I'm willing mm-hmm. to give Kenny Pickett a pass there. I don't know if, they go from really bad to to league average or do they just go from really bad to just bad against yeah. the Raiders. But um, they at least are playing a defense in, in Las Vegas that is dead last with a 10% pressure rate through the, the first two weeks uh, while blitzing 30% of the time. And on the flip side, the Steelers have the number one pressure rate through two weeks. So never betting Josh McDaniels to win by four plus points ever. So that's kind of where I'm at on this game. I just haven't decided if I'm just taking the Steelers plus three or if I'm going to use them in a, in a teaser leg. Yeah, if we're sitting here, uh, Adam, I don't know if we said to people, hey, tell me the number three team in the NFL in EPA per pass play and tell me who that was going to be through the first couple of weeks of the season. I think you'd get a whole lot of answers before you got to the Raiders, but it's actually the Raiders and uh, the offenses look competent, right? It's just the defense that's the... The problem here, what do you see in a game that they're coming in actually favored? I'm going to push back a little bit on a team that scored 17 on Denver that then watched Washington go in and put up 35. And then a team that put up 10 against the Buffalo team that puts no pressure on the quarterback about that offense looking good. I mean, on script early on, yeah, they looked all right. Uh, And I think part of what you're seeing with the Raiders is that They are able to move the ball a little bit, but they've shown no ability to be able to go in and sustain drives for points, right? Because that 17 against Denver also includes a gift touchdown from Sean Payton on that botched onside kick at the beginning of the game. So I don't really have a lot of trust in this offense. The one side that has performed well is the offensive line. They've been much better than we expected them to be. Josh Jacobs thus far this year, has 28 carries for 46 yards. And I don't believe this is the team in Pittsburgh that he is going to improve that against. And also, Jimmy Garoppolo, under pressure, when he was under pressure last week, was abysmal against Buffalo, including having a screen pass intercepted and having a linebacker jump over the back of a running back to intercept a pass. So for me, this is Pittsburgh plus eight and a half. I cannot see at all where the push has been here out on Las Vegas because there is one truly elite unit in this game, and it is the Pittsburgh defense. Yes, they are beaten up. No Cam Hayward, maybe no Minka Fitzpatrick, etc. I don't believe that they're going to be able to slow down or stop TJ Watt, who is by a long shot the best pass rusher that they'll have seen this year so far. Steven, I think when we look at the Raiders and the inefficiencies that Josh Jacobs has had so far this year, it's, it really is a direct correlation to Jimmy Garoppolo because you had Derek Carr who would YOLO the ball down the field or whatever. And like guys had to respect the deep pass and like that, they couldn't just sit up real close to the line and jo- and Jacobs was able to find lanes and able to move. Like you, you have Jimmy Garoppolo yet again, 18th in the league and average depth of target already. You know I mean? This is what we've seen in Jimmy Garoppolo over the years. And it's just playing out yet again here. So guys can just stay closer to the line. If you're staying close to the line, there's more guys that can come in and gang tackle a guy like Jacobs. And I don't think that that's going to change because Jimmy Garoppolo is who he is. If there is one thing that we know about James Garoppolo, 
he ain't changing who he is. Like he plays football the way he plays football. And that's just the way it's going to be. So I think there's going to be a lot of long days for, for Josh Jacobs in this offense. You basically read my notes here because I had the same observation about Jimmy not being able to throw deep anymore. And Ted Nguyen, one of the beat reporters out there, had a great stat this week. He said Josh Jacobs last year had about eight rushes per game against two deep defenses post-snap. So far this season, he has five total. So the boxes are stacked. The defenses don't respect Jimmy G being able to beat them deep. And it's affecting them because through two weeks, the Raiders rushing game is 31st and 32nd in rush EPA and success rate. Guys, everything we do absolutely free over on the lines.com. So please take advantage of that. Use the prop tool for crying out loud. It's the best thing that's going out there. Click on the button. It's a green button right in the middle of the page. You're shopping the best odds. Make sure you're getting the best number. Please, please, please utilize that upper right hand corner. There's the discord as well, where everybody's talking football all the time along with every single other sport and giving some good insights and things like that so be sure and do that as well if you haven't already subscribe to this channel we're free all season long going to be here giving out our picks give us a thumbs up let us know in the comment section what bets do you love this week what bets do you hate this week and what do you think that we got right and or wrong we'll be back with full monday night two different monday night football breakdowns on this very channel on monday as well for steven for adam i'm matt see you guys next week good luck on are you week three bets <laughs>